In this video, I would like to discuss how to calculate the area under a standard normal curve. So unlike uniform distribution where you have a rectangle, you can do the base times height to approximate the area right, of the rectangle. The bell curve is not a rectangle. So to find the area under the curve, you will have to use a calculator command called normal CDF in your calculator. So how do we go to the normal CDF? So uh, there are, I have two screenshots, one for the older calculator and one for a newer calculator. So you go to second, you go to VARS, and then you find normal CDF. So second VARS, you hit the VARS key and then the second option, you see normal CDF, right? So normal CDF, the C stands for cumulative. So overall, CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. Cumulative means you are adding area under the curve or finding area under the curve. What about normal PDF? Normal PDF is finding a specific point on the curve. So since we are interested in finding the area, finding the probability, you will not need CDF in probability. So when you find probability under the normal curve, under the bell curve, you use CDF. So you go to second VARS and then you select normal CDF. For the newer calculator, like the one I am using right now, if you click normal CDF, Look, take a look at the first screenshot, it will return to the home screen. So you will see normal CDF with an open parenthesis on your home screen and then a cursor is flashing. They are expect you to enter four numbers, the lower limit, separate them by a comma. Where is the comma? The comma is a key that is right above the seven. So do you see there is a comma right above seven? Comma. And then upper limit, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. So that is the older calculator. For the newer calculator, TI-84 plus uh, C or CE, they will show you a menu, which is the second screenshot, the bigger screenshot. So they will show you a menu, normal CDF, they will ask you for lower limit, upper limit, mean, and standard deviation. So once you click paste, you paste the entire command on the home screen, and then you click enter again, then you get your probability. So uh, do you see that there is a negative one E99? So what is that? So that one, we have to take a look at the graph again. So the bell curve doesn't stop at all. So if you look all the way to the right of the bell curve, the curve extends all the way to negative infinity. Negative inf infinity is a number that is negative and extremely large. Positive infinity is a number that is positive and extremely large. How big the number is, how big is that number? We don't know. Now, think, think about this on your paper. Can you write down the biggest real number on, on your paper, can you write down, does such number exist, the biggest real number in the world? Can you write such number on your paper? 9 million, 99 million. I can always give you a number bigger than that. That means this type, this number doesn't exist. So doesn't exist, we are not going to draw a question mark. We are mathematicians, so we use an infinity symbol. So the, the infinity symbol looks like this, it's a eight, but you put that on a side way. So that is an infinity symbol. So for past infinity, in our calculator, we type 1 times 10 to the 99th power, which is 1 followed by 99 zero. So we treat that as a positive infinity. The negative infinity, you put a negative right before the 1. So speaking of negative, where is the negative key? The negative key, listen, is right between the decimal key and the enter key. Again, the negative key is right between the decimal key and the enter key on your graphing calculator. Do not use minus. Minus and negative are not the same. So look at your calculator. Do you see there is a negative wrapped by a parenthesis right between the decimal point and the enter key? That is for negative, all right? And then uh, the negative one E99, the E stands for base 10, and then the 99 is the power. So uh, let me show you how to do how to apply this. So I have four problems right here. I want you to draw a curve and then uh, use the normal CDF command to find the probability. So for your own, for your reference, I already did the problem for you. Of course, I show you how to do it again. So starting with number one. Number one is we have probability Z is less than or equal to 1.83. So we have a normal curve and then zero is right in the middle, z is 
after standardization, so we have mean equals to zero. Standard normal, mu equals to zero, sigma is equals to one. Standard normal distribution, 1.83 is on the right hand side because we have passed the value on the right hand side of zero, it's just like a lumber line, right? You have zero right in the middle, and then one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. On the left hand side, you have negative one, negative two, negative three, so on and so forth. So the right end is positive infinity, the left end is negative infinity. This is called a number line. If you still don't know what number line is, you have to look it up online. Uh, on my on my channel, I also have a video that explains how the number line works. So you can search for that. So 1.83 less than or equal to that. So the area is on the left hand side. So less than or equal to 1.83. And then the probability command is normal CDF. The lower limit is negative infinity. The upper limit is 1.83. The mean is zero. Standard deviation is one. So that is mu, that is sigma. Again, we use zero and one because this is a standard normal distribution. We use Z. Z means standard normal distribution. Mean equals to zero. Standard deviation equals to one. So the first two number, you always put the small number on the left, big number on the right. Lower limit followed by upper limit. Small on the left, big on the right, just like how the number line works. Small number on the left, big number on the right. And then you go to your calculator. So you go to second and then you type VARS, the VARS key. So you see distribution because this is a normal distribution. So second VARS and then you select normal CDF. How do you type negative infinity? You type negative one, not minus. The negative is between the decimal point and the enter. So negative one and then the base 10, so you type second and then you hit the comma. Then you see an E that is base 10 and then 99, nine, so negative infinity, comma, 1.83 and then comma, 0, comma, a 1, and then you will press enter to get the probability. So the probability is equals to 0 0.9664. For probability, I always keep four decimal places. So that's how you find the probability. For the newer calculator, you do that on this menu. Do you see that there is a screenshot normal CDF? If you have this on your calculator, then you don't need to use a comma. The calculator will do the comma for you. So that's why I always prefer people to get a newer calculator. So that is the first one. And then number two, number two, we have a less than or equal to negative 0 0.61, so P Z less than or equal to negative 0 0.61 then I draw a graph 0 right in the middle negative on the left less than or equal to you is this right so this one would be normal CDF from negative infinity to negative 0 0.61 standard normal mean is equals to 0 standard deviation is equals to 1 and then you go to second verse normal CDF, negative 1, second comma to get the E, and then 99, mean is, uh, the upper limit is negative 0 0.61, do not use minus please, negative, the key between the decimal point and the enter, and then 0, 1, so the probability is 0 0.27, 0, 9, that is the probability that you want, and then the next one is greater than 4.85, so number 3, we have probability x is not, not sorry not x z is greater than 4.85 and then we have zero right in the middle 4.85 is right there so the probability is very tiny if you use um, a, a perfect scale 4.85 is already more than three standard deviation above the mean, so the probability is going to be very tiny. So the purpose of this problem is what happened when the probability is tiny. So this one we do normal CDF, 4.85 is the lower limit, upper limit is positive infinity, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. So this one, the result is very interesting. I want you to take a look at that. Second verse, normal CDF, second verse, normal CDF, 
and then we go from 4.85 to pass the infinity. That would be one second comma nine nine, and then mean is zero. Standard deviation is one. Close that. Then we get this. Do you see that there is a six point something, and then the, at the end of the answer there is a e negative zero seven. This is a scientific notation that is zero point seventeen times ten to the negative seven. This is a probability, and the way we express this, this one has a name is called scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way to express a long number in a very compact form. If you don't know what scientific notation is at all, you should go back and um, you should uh, you should either look up for, for a video online. But uh, on my channel, I do have a video that fully explains scientific notation. So this one is basically you move the decimal point seven steps to the left. So that is uh, another way to say this is six point seventeen divided by one followed by seven zero. So this is equals to zero point uh, that many zeros, six zero, and then six one seven. So when you see uh, probabilities like this, that means the probability is very close to zero, but not equals to zero. So how do we go the seven steps? So we starting right here, right? And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's how I got this answer. So when you see numbers like this, that means the probability is very, very close to zero. Let's take a look at the last one. The last one we have a negative 0 0.63 and 1.95. So number four, probability negative 0 0.63 less than z less than 1.45 or 25, 1.95. So we draw a graph. We have zero right in the middle, negative 0 0.63. 1.95 and then we have that okay so th the calculator command is normal cdf from negative 0 0.63 to pass that 1.95 the mean is zero standard deviation is one let's go take a look second worst normal cdf negative 0 0.63 to 1.95 the mean is zero standard deviation is one and there you go, the area is 0 0.710, uh, rounded to four decimal places, the last digit is a 1. So that's how we approximate the area under a standard normal curve. And that is also the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful, let me know in the comment section below. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share the video out for me. I am sure that many people are looking for similar instructions too. I appreciate your help. I will see you all. In the next lesson, signing off for now.